Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are starting the 2029 to 2030 offseason, and uh, we're not starting from a position of strength. We don't have a lot of money to play with, and uh, we've also decided to move on from scout Lonnie Goldberg. Uh, we've made an offer to bring another new scout on board. Uh, but we only got three weeks until uh, the free agency filings and uh, salary arbitration hearings. We know that we're going to offer Sullivan, Melenge, Perez, and Talavera. So we've made offers to them. We're most likely going to offer Nick York, uh, but we're going to wait to hopefully over the next week get a new scout hired and then scout through the top of our organization relatively quickly. Um, to just get an updated view on all of these guys. Kevin Made and Alec Burleson are tougher calls to me um, because they're both going to be making four, four and a half million. Um, potentially Burleson I still envision as a starting left fielder against right-handers with us. Um, but my day in a perfect world, I want him to be a utility guy. And I'm just not sure if I want to be spending $4 million on a utility guy, given uh, that we are in a pretty difficult financial situation right now. So I'm um, hoping to get a scout hired very quickly, as well as the other holes on our coaching staff, and then get our organization scouted, and then start kind of getting an idea of who the key free agents might be this off season, and then we'll decide uh, whether to bring Made and or Burleson back uh, next year or potentially free up a little bit more money to use uh, in the free agent market or potentially even uh, in the trade market. All right, we do finally have a full coaching staff, so we're starting to kind of scout through our players. Um, made two changes at the major league level. Uh, we let our pitching coach leave. We brought on Julio Serrano, who I think could be outstanding. Um, he's outstanding at teaching pitching, development and mechanics, excellent at handling aging. Uh, he's unproven, um, but generally that just means um, that you can get the guy for a pretty good deal. So we're giving him a shot. And then we ended up hiring Rick Hahn as our scouting uh, director, uh, former GM of the White Sox. Um, he's honestly not all that different than Goldberg. They're both highly favored tools guys. I think Hahn is one step better. If I remember correctly, I think that um, Goldberg was good um, at minor leagues rather than excellent. But otherwise, these guys look very similar. Uh, but at least we've got a... Uh, hopefully pretty good um, scouting director on board for the next five years. Um, so now our goal is to start um, start scouting our players and make some decisions. We've got the uh, pitchers that we made offers to all sign, just waiting for scouting reports back on these guys. And um, we're also going to take a look at uh, the potential free agents in the next few days as other teams start signing players as well, find out what type of talent might be available, and then ultimately make a decision on potentially bringing back Made, Burleson, and York. And as I've talked about, I'm pretty sure we're bringing York back. Um, Made and Burleson definitely are more up in the air in my mind. So as I said, I think we're going to bring Nick York back. And Nick York, to me, is a good example of someone who, when you look at his batting ratings, he doesn't seem all that exciting. He seems like he's most likely a replacement-ish level player at the major leagues. But you look at what he's done now over the course of four seasons, and he's a 300 career hitter in 848 bats at the major league, 840 at bats at the major league level. 48 doubles and 34 homers in that time. Uh, and it's not just that he's feasting on left-handed pitching, uh, because when you look at his splits, um, he's hitting 305 against uh, left-handers. But he's hitting 300 against right-handers, um, even though more often than not, um, we're trying to get him playing against left-handers. Um, so he's been a pretty productive hitter for us. Um, 
And although he's going to get a raise this coming year, now that he's finally got over three years of service time, um, he's a pretty important offensive player for us. And we definitely have struggled um, this past season against left-handed pitching. And uh, the fact that although he's pretty productive against both um, types of pitching, when you look at his ratings against left-handers, they're a little a little bit higher than his ratings against right-handed pitching. Um, so I think he's a useful guy to keep around. Don't love him defensively anywhere, um, but uh, still a guy that we can potentially platoon at first base and or left field. So we'll probably bring him back. Left fielder Alec Burleson is tougher. He's almost 31 years old, four and a half million ish that he's going to be making next year. Um, he hit 264 with three homers for us and 182 at bats um, for the year. Decent production: 31 doubles, 12 home runs, over 540 some odd at bats. Um, batting average in the two. Well, I could look it up if I uh, would go back to this previous screen that shows his some figures: 290 for the season. Um, but he's a guy who I look at his ratings and it's not a materially different profile than York. Honestly, his contact and his avoid Ks are better. But you look at the course of Burleson over the course of his career and he's been a pretty average offensive player. Um, barely above replacement level when all was said and done. Um, so four and a half million for that really doesn't excite me. Um, Kevin Made is kind of in the middle as far as difficult decisions. Uh, he's a guy who's been an important player for Buffalo for the four years he's been in the majors with us. Has gone from being a full-time starter um, to a utility guy. Um, other than his first season with us, he has not been a particularly productive offensive player. Looks like he's pretty consistently going to be in the 80s for his OPS plus and his WRC plus most likely. Um, I do really like his defensive versatility and his defensive talent. Um, but he's a fragile guy who we're viewing as a utility infielder who still wants to make around $4 million next year, or still will make about $4 million next year. And I'm just not convinced with the holes that we have on our team, namely a starting third baseman, which I don't think we want Made to be. Left fielder, if we move on from Burleson, backup catcher, and then potentially a utility infielder spot or two if we move on from Made in addition to maybe even looking for a pitcher, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of holes to fill and not a lot of money to do it. And as much as um, I like my day, um, I like a lot of things about him, his ability to draw walks, um, his defense, obviously. But $4 million-ish for him to be a utility guy for us when we could potentially be looking at Toshimitsu Kato with um, very similar defensive versatility and quality, more speed, not as good a bat, um, but not a huge difference in the bats. And we could have him at our utility guy at the major league level for a million dollars. Um, makes me think that Maybe it's time to try to move on from Made and or um, Burleson. So I think I'm at the very least going to shop those guys and see if there's any options out there. Could be an opportunity for us to package something together and maybe get a third baseman that we're looking for or even just the backup catcher that we're looking for while also um, potentially freeing up some funds to... Uh, spend in free agency and there's actually a decent market for Alec Burleson and I think I'm going to take advantage of a or try to take advantage of a blast from the past you may remember Tana Charlette the catcher who was the number two overall pick back in 2024 uh, finally made his Major League debut with Washington last year. 
honestly, he's a Samuel Basalo type. Uh, I think he's going to be a pretty good home run hitter at the major league level. Obviously, we only have average scouting accuracy on him, but this is a guy that uh, I did look at uh, two episodes ago when we went back through um, some blasts from the past. Um, I just think the bat with the home run power here is potentially um, really interesting. And there is an option with him being a right-handed hitter and with Basalo being a left-handed hitter, that we could just go with the two of those very mediocre defensive catchers as backup catchers slash DHs and just have Basalo be the backup catcher against right-handed pitching when Rutschman um, needed a day off. Gillette being the backup catcher against left-handed pitching when Rutschman needed the day off and just suck up the poor defense um, or the below average defense that they would likely give us. It's not an optimal solution, um, but Gillette is also a guy with one option year left. Um, could make him a real bad left fielder. Obviously, he can also play first base. Um, don't love having another guy whose best position is DH, similar to Basalo on our team. But I think it's not a bad return to potentially get Burleson and his four and a half million ish contract next year off the books. Give ourselves an opportunity to. Um, Potentially do something dangerous at catcher with just such poor backups. But again, if uh, Rutschman stays healthy and hopefully plays 125, 130 games for us at catcher, and it's only 35, 40 games that um, Gillette and Basalo would be playing defensively at catcher. And if and when we got to the playoffs with the off days, Rutschman would be our catcher every day. And we would just have those guys to play DH, first base, left field, pinch hit. Um, I think I'm going to at least explore the trade for Burleson. Um, so we're going to go ahead and submit that offer. Um, again, with the amount of money that Burleson's going to make next year, um, could be something that works out well for us, um, just in terms of freeing up money. Again, I'm not sure how I feel about um, Gillette and Basalo as potential backup catchers next year, actually expecting them to be playing catcher. Part of the reason I didn't make a trade for Gillette years ago in game time is that uh, I didn't love the idea of a poor defensive catcher. Um, so it's kind of silly that... Uh, here a few seasons later, I could end up with him and Basalo, who are both well below average or below average defensively as my potential backup catchers. But um, I think it could be good for our offense. It could free up some money to use this off season, And I just don't know that I want to be spending four and a half million a year on Burleson. So um, getting him off the books for a young guy making the minimum under team control for several seasons with one option year still ahead of him uh, seems to me something that we should consider. We've also shopped Kevin Made, and the uh, lack of interest in Made kind of makes me think that it's probably the right decision to uh, either trade him away or not make him an offer. Um, as we talked about, I love his defensive ability. I love his defense. Um, his bat is what it is at this point. Um, had the one really good year for us in 2026 offensively. Other than that, he's pretty consistently been a below average offensive player. Brings a lot to the table defensively. Um, but I don't know that I want to be spending $4 million next year on a guy who I envision as a utility infielder for us. When, as we talked about, we've got Cato, who is 
also very proficient defensively. Not quite the arm that Made has, but still pretty proficient defensively. Better speed. Probably not quite as good a hitter, but he's younger, he's a lot cheaper, and he's not fragile. Um, so I think we are going to look to move on from Made um, one way or the other. Either make a trade for one of these not all that exciting guys that we can pick up for him or uh just don't make him an offer in free agents or in arbitration to uh free up a little more extra money for us in free agency when uh everyone's on the market and the guy that i think we're going to trade for is or try to trade for is easton swafford um not much of a bat i admit um Certainly not even upgrading the pretty weak bat that we have with Made, but another guy who's versatile defensively, not as good as Made, but still can play second and short. We can train him in the preseason or in the minors um, since he does have option year left to also play third base, make him a little more versatile defensively. Um, good personality with that captain personality class. Um, not thrilled about the low intelligence, but to be fair, my day has got low leadership, so he's not always perfect, but he's making a lot less money. Is he as good as my day? No. But again, he's going to be making about $3.3 million a year less than my day next season. And right now, we don't have a captain personality on the team potentially next season. Um, I don't know that Swafford is the guy that we want in that role, but um, at least having a guy who could be the 26th man on the roster who can play a few different positions and also brings that captain personality to help rally the troops together um, could be useful. Um, but again, this is more just about not wanting to pay Made $4 million to be a utility infielder for us than it is thinking that we're getting anything particularly great with Swafford. I'd say in a perfect scenario, Swafford would be in AAA for us next year. Um, but we're going to go ahead and submit that offer. Um, and we'll wait to hear about what could potentially happen with um, Burleson and Made. We're uh, in a position where we could be setting ourselves up to change this uh, roster even more significantly than we anticipated over the course of this off season. And uh, even if we do move on from Made and Burleson, not gonna have tons of money to spend, but in that, you know, two, three, four million dollar range, there's a chance that we could add uh, multiple players in free agency to uh, hopefully help us out and fit what we're trying to do a little more cost effectively than we felt like we were gonna potentially be doing it with Made and Burleson. So we'll see what the responses to those trade offers are. And it looks like we can get both of those deals done. Uh, basically just need to throw in a garbage player to get them done, which means that when we go and uh, respond to the message and discuss the trade, they'll let us complete it. So we are gonna send Made for Swafford. Um, again, this is really just um, clearing some salary off the books. Um, Made is a guy who was our starting shortstop in Buffalo uh, that first season, and he had a nice offensive season for us, a 3.2 war. Um, he's been a below average offensive player ever since then. Uh, best he's ever hit is 231, 11 homers. Um, not a lot of speed on the base paths. Uh, he's fragile as far as his injury proneness. Um, love the glove, but I just don't feel that $4 million on a guy to be a utility infielder is something that we can afford to do with the position we put ourselves in terms of our salary on this team. And obviously, my day could be our starting third baseman next year. Um, but I'd like a little more offense from that position, even if uh, it means we're giving up something defensively at third. So um, thank you, Kevin Made, for everything you did for us over these four years. But we're going to go ahead and trade you for Easton Swafford. And similarly... Um, Alec Burleson, we're going to bring Tanner Shillette on board. Um, 
years after uh, we had that opportunity for Andres Medina. Um, I don't know what we're going to end up doing defensively at backup catcher now with Basalo and Shillette, who are really two pure DHs um, potentially on the roster. We could be boxing ourselves in a bit as far as uh, positional flexibility unless we're willing to let those guys share the backup catcher job uh, next year, which I'm a bit reticent to do, but it may be the um, best way for us to build this team. So we're going to go ahead and ship Burleson to the Nationals, get Chalette in return. Uh, at this point on arbitration, we're just waiting to hear from the offer that we made to Nick York. And uh, when we take a look at uh, our financial situation, we've now opened up a little bit of money to potentially play with this upcoming offseason. And another season uh, in the books, another gold glove for Deshaun Seifu. Um, so two gold gloves in a row for the second baseman. Uh, he's definitely been better defensively at second base than I anticipated. And obviously, as we've talked about in previous episodes, a uh, incredibly differentiated and dynamic offensive force with his ability to lead the league in triples uh, every year he's been in the majors, except for the cup of coffee the year he was drafted. Uh, led the league in steals two years in a row now, and he also led the league in runs and hits this year. Um, and he's uh, played a gold glove level second base for us each of the last two years while also being named an all-star in each season. And another day, uh, another award, and uh, not surprisingly, designated hitter Samuel Basalo with his second consecutive silver slugger. So uh, he was rookie of the year last year all-star this year and he has been the uh, national league silver slugger at dh each of his two seasons in the major leagues uh, i mentioned he could potentially be sharing backup catcher duties with Shillette next year which i don't love given that poor catcher ability but um it might only be something where we only need to get 20 some odd games out of him but uh two years in the major leagues and he has not spent a minute in the field he has been a pure dh for us 162 games this year and uh primarily a dh with a little bit of pinch hitting action in his rookie year um certainly not a perfect player strikes out a ton um doesn't walk an exceptional amount of times but uh consistently 35 to 45 homers 30 to 30 or 35 to 45 doubles 30 35 home runs 100 ribbies each season in the majors um, batting average not exceptional and obviously he doesn't bring anything to the table defensively but still a uh, useful player um, particularly when he's still making the major league minimum going to be real interesting choice for him as he starts getting into his arbitration eligible seasons um and we're going to have to potentially pay him pretty significant money given the um, offense that he's delivered with his bat. That, quite honestly, may be the time when uh, we decide to uh, move on from Mr. Basalo and trade him to a uh, bigger market team that can afford to uh, pay him more than the minimum. But we've got at least one more year before we need to worry about that. And it looks like the gold glove for Seifu and the silver slugger for Basala were the only uh, awards for the Buffalo Wings this past offseason. Uh, AL Cy Young Award to George Kirby of the Mariners, 14-8 with a 2.99 ERA. Uh, NL Cy Young Award to Pierce George, 24 first place votes. He was 14-8 with a 3.13 ERA. Our guy, Shohei Otani, uh, finished second in the voting. Otani led the National League with 36 games started, 12-11 and 11 record, 333 ERA, 242 strikeouts, 127 ERA plus, 70 fit minus, 2.48 Sierra, and a 6.4 war. So a really nice year for Otani, and uh, looks like he's the only guy on our team who got... Uh, any votes and any attention. Spencer Strider and Josh Hader uh, got the other first place votes, and Paul Skeens, who we faced off again in the um, faced off against in the playoffs for a second straight year. He was last year's Cy Young Award winner. Uh, also got some votes after his strong season. 
AL MVP Kenny Lavari of the Angels, 301, 39 homers, and 117 ribbies for the third baseman. The National League MVP is Michael Harris II, 310 batting average, 24 homers, 89 ribbies, uh, also playing uh, an excellent defensive center field, won another gold glove this year, and uh, he also stole 59 bases. Uh, Deshaun Seifu finished fourth in the voting and did get three first place votes. Uh, Seifu and Ellie De La Cruz got the other first place votes, um, even though Edwin Arroyo finished second overall in the voting. And uh, shortstop Marcelo Meyer also got some MVP votes, uh, along with center fielder Vance Honeycutt. So a little bit of attention for our Buffalo Wings in the MVP voting, but... Uh, Deshaun Seifu is going to need to uh, have an even better year to uh, potentially win an MVP one of these days. And with the trades that we've made and the other moves that we were involved in, uh, nobody was arbitration eligible on our team. We got everyone we wanted to get signed signed beforehand. So we've uh, made it to the beginning of free agency. Basically, we've just had our scout um, scouting the top potential free agents basically anyone who's three stars or above to uh, try to get to know those players as we're rebuilding our institutional knowledge uh, we've also got a number of international free agents this year see if there's anyone who with a very quick look looks interesting looks like it's a very uh lowly rated crew thus far maybe we just don't know much about them Frank Carrera out of uh, Cuba looks like one of the more interesting prospects, although we certainly don't love the personality there. Oh, here's a guy, second baseman Junshi Takeuchi out of Japan. Huh. like the durability. I don't love him at second base. I don't hate him there, but... We're also looking for a third baseman, and that profile for a third baseman is pretty darn solid. Uh, Right-handed hitter. I mean, honestly, he's got a similar-ish offensive profile to what Kevin Made had. Um, we're going to request a scouting report on him. Uh, and we're also going to offer him a minor league contract. Um, obviously, we've only got average scouting accuracy. OSA is looking at him similarly. Um, I don't think he's a perfect third baseman, um, but beggars can't be choosers, and uh, we don't have a ton of money to spend this offseason. Uh, Fujio Amori, uh, another third baseman. Um, more of a prospect um we'll request a scouting report on him and also offer him a minor league contract initially and last but not least center fielder alvaro cedillo um looks like a pretty interesting player like the durability like the work ethic good offense good outfield range got some speed um pretty good gap power pretty good eye uh, he's looking for 3.4 million probably not a perfect fit but uh would i rather him have him as my left fielder for 3.4 million than burleson for around four and a half million yeah i think i probably would rather take a flyer on him um we will request a scouting report on cedillo um wants a contract which becomes a guaranteed major league deal if promoted um wonder how low of a deal we can offer him on that front if he'd go for two million right now i'd just try to get him signed yeah that's not gonna work um we'll wait on him to see if we can get uh a little more information hopefully through that scouting report that uh we requested uh the big major league free agents uh spencer strider on the market um looking for big money would obviously be a uh, asset 
33 million a year over eight years is what he's asking for uh, certainly could be a nice addition to a pitching staff I think that will be difficult for us to pull off second baseman Ezekiel Tovar um, looking for even more money obviously would be an asset to just about any team Wasaburo Akiyama um, guy who I believe um, yeah six years of major league service at this point um, led the American League in homers three straight years led the league in strikeouts two of those three years over 200 strikeouts a season looking for big money obviously a productive bat veteran Matt Olson at first uh, Ricky Tiedman, left-handed starting pitcher. Um, he would be an interesting guy to try to bring on board, but again, looking for $28 million, um, but certainly younger than a lot of these other free agents. Andres Alvarez, who um, could play third for us. Um, not an ideal arm for third, but uh, we looked at trying to trade for him briefly last year when we didn't have any money to bring on people. Uh, shortstop Dansby Swanson, second baseman C.J. Abrams, left fielder Jazz Chisholm Jr. We do need a left fielder. Don't know that we can spend $20 million on one. And then Andres Jimenez, uh, second baseman. He could also potentially be a third baseman, but fragile, looking for $23 million a year. Don't know that we're going to be playing at that part of the market. Uh, one thing that uh, was brought up in the comments to our last episode that I did want to check in on, though, was that uh, Three Quarters Badger um, made the point that maybe we look to move on from Otani. And um, Otani, we had front-loaded his contract, so he's 30 this year, 25 next year, and then the vesting option for $20 million potentially for his age 37 season. So still obviously the second most... Uh, Second biggest contract on our team for this coming season behind only Rutschman. Um, and he's coming off of the best season he had with us. We talked about the fact that he was the runner-up in the Cy Young voting for the National League this year. So still a very productive player. But if we could potentially get a lot for Otani and then recycle that money into somebody like Spencer Strider, um, that could be something to think about um go ahead and shop otani and there's definitely some options there but they're all uh players making uh crazy amounts of money um in many cases more than otani's making um now you could certainly argue that bringing on someone like nelvi Marte um that solves our third base problem or our second base problem. Um, not that we have a second base problem. We got, as we've talked about, a two-time All-Star and a two-time Gold Glove winner and a 25-year-old uh, Seifu there now. But bring on Marte and uh, play one of them in second and one of them at third. Um, yeah, 250 hitter with some pop in the bat definitely has its value. Um, and he's certainly younger than Otani. But I don't I don't know that I want to do that. Um, if we're looking to just save some money, bring on first baseman Ty France. Uh, but we've got a lot of DH slash first base slash left field types on the team at this point. He could play third if we really didn't care about defense. Um, and that would help in that spot um you know 233 hitter last year with 17 home runs um so i think it's interesting to think about potentially moving on from otani uh but i'm honestly not necessarily seeing something here that totally excites me yoander suarez of the mets um you know he's a guy who's going to be making Five million more than Otani next year, and ten million more than Otani if the deal vests the year after. Granted, he's several years younger, not the um, most popular guy in the clubhouse with that personality. J Jacob Gonzalez from uh, Detroit, another guy who we could maybe turn into a third baseman, but um, not really seeing anyone that. Um, 
makes me love the idea of moving on from um, Otani, quite honestly. Um, you know, particularly with the fact that um, we have lost Shane Bieber now. Um, Otani is going to be even more important to us this coming year to hopefully be the cornerstone of our rotation. So I did want to at least look at the options if you've got thoughts on what we should uh, think about doing in free agency or in the trade market. Uh, obviously would love to hear them. You know, please share them in the comment section down below. Um, you know, the good news is we've got some money to spend. The bad news is we've got a hole at third. We've got a hole at left field. We probably could use a utility infielder. Probably could use another arm or two for the bullpen. And uh, if we don't want to go with Basalo and Chalette as backup catchers, we could uh, certainly use a backup catcher as well who's better off defensively. So a lot of holes for us to potentially fill this offseason. Um, so we're not going to likely be playing at the top, top end of the market. Uh, you can see Strider among the starting pitchers, Tiedman, who we talked about. Um, those are the two top guys on the market, obviously looking for big money uh, among the batters. Um, Pete Alonso, who we hadn't mentioned, Alvarez, Jimenez, Tovar, Abrams, Akamaya. Not going to be competing at the top end of the catchers, uh, obviously, with Rutschman on board already for us. Uh, Jose Abreu and Nolan Arenado, a couple of former Buffalo Wings still on the market in their late 30s and early 40s. So there are uh, options for us to consider. Uh, again, I think we're going to end up playing at the much lower end of the market, you know, looking for a lower cost player here. Robert Hassel III um, is a potential left fielder. He's basically a guy at this point, um, but he's the type of guy that we can afford. I do think that um, there's going to be um, a need to be creative this offseason since we're not going to be playing at the top end of the free agent market. Maybe we can piece together some interesting things in the trade market. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky with one of these um, international free agents. A lot of different permutations this offseason could take, so I think it's going to be an interesting one for the Buffalo Wings as we try to uh, get this team back to the playoffs for a third consecutive season. So uh, if you've got thoughts on what we've done, if you've got thoughts on what we should do, uh, would love to hear them in the comment section. And until our next episode, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.